Hey everybody, this is Erin from practicepharmacy.com, the student pharmacist site for study resources and real world pharmacy examples. Today I'm going to show you how to do the calculations for a heparin bolus and drip according to protocol orders. But first, if you don't understand how to use conversion factors, or if you need a refresher on the math involved, check out the video that I've done on that. I'll link to it in the description below this video. Okay. Protocol orders vary from one hospital to the next, but in general, for heparin, they'll include baseline lab work and a bolus dose, which is then followed by an IV infusion. Let's say a 229 pound patient comes in and the physician orders heparin per protocol for ACS, which is the abbreviation for acute coronary syndrome. The protocol order defines the dosing. And here it is. Heparin, 60 units per kilogram bolus IV with a maximum bolus of 4,000 units. And then heparin, 25,000 units per 500 milliliters of D5W at 12 units per kilogram per hour and the maximum initial infusion rate for that is a thousand units per hour. First we'll calculate the bolus dose to be given. We'll take the patient's weight in pounds, convert it to kilograms, then convert to units of heparin. We'll compare the answer to the maximum bolus and then we'll determine the dose in milliliters. So first convert pounds to kilograms. We have a 229 pound patient. We know that one kilogram is the same as 2.2 pounds. So if we multiply that out, the pounds cancel and we're left with 104 kilograms. We can take that 104 kilogram patient weight, multiply it by the dose from the protocol order of 60 units per kilogram. Here the kilograms cancel out. We're left with 602, six, sorry, 6,245 units. But remember from the protocol that 4,000 is the maximum. So this is too much to be given the patient right off the bat. Now we'll go ahead and determine how much of the heparin from the vial will be required to give the dose of 4,000 units. To do that we need the dose of 4,000 units and we'll multiply that by the concentration which is 1 cc has 5,000 units. Units cancel and you're left with 0 0.8 milliliters which is going to be the amount to give to give the bolus according to protocol. So if you've done a little math, you probably you might see that we could start with 229 pounds and set this up using dimensional analysis so that we just go straight through and come up with our answer of 0 0.8 milliliters. But if we had done that, we might miss the fact that the uh, calculated dose would be too high. So it's a good idea to double check the protocol order and make sure you're not going to overdose the patient by going straight through to the end answer in milliliters there. Okay, uh, the 0 0.8 milliliters or 4,000 units will be given to the patient and that's going to bring the blood levels of heparin up quickly. Um, then will the then the drip will be hung to maintain those levels. To calculate the drip rate for the bolus, we need the patient's weight, the rate ordered on the protocol, which should be in units per kilogram per hour, and the concentration of the heparin, which will again be in units per milliliter, but this time it's going to be different than the concentration of the bolus dose that we just gave. The goal is to take the patient's weight and determine the rate in milliliters per hour. So for our 104 kilogram patient, 104 kilograms, the order says 12 units per kilogram per hour, oops, which comes out to 1,248 
and you'll see the units of kilograms cancel. So here we're going to pause at units per hour. Compare that to the maximum infusion rate to start with on the protocol, which was 1,000 units per hour. So once again, for this particular patient, the calculated rate is too high. So we'll just go with 1,000 units per hour. Now we need the concentration. It's provided in the order, but we can double check with the label on the premix bag just to be sure. So we'll take 1,000 units per hour as the maximum initial infusion rate, and we'll multiply by the concentration so that the units cancel out the way we want them to. So 5,000, or excuse me, 500 milliliters has 25,000 units of heparin. And of course you could use uh, 50 units in one milliliter as long as you're absolutely sure when you cancel those zeros out that you haven't made a mistake there. Uh, the math there, um, the units cancel and milliliters here is on top, hours on the bottom. So we've got 20 milliliters per hour as our initial infusion rate. Then you can always do the math backwards to make sure your dose is correct. If you have 20 milliliters per hour and you're giving um, an infusion that has 50 units per cc, as we just said, well 20 times 50 is 1,000 and then milliliters cancel, units is on top, units per hour, and again, there's the maximum initial infusion rate. So this drip will be hung at this rate, 20 milliliters per hour, for six hours, then depending on the PTT obtained at that point, which is a blood level, the rate will be adjusted according to the nomogram on the protocol. And the nomogram is a chart that tells the nurse whether to increase or decrease the rate according to how well anticoagulated the patient's blood is. Sometimes the infusion will even be stopped for a set period of time before being restarted at a slower rate, and other times a bolus of heparin might be indicated, followed by an increase in the rate. All right, that's it. I hope it helps. If you found this video useful, please subscribe to my channel then head over to www.practicepharmacy.com for more study resources and real-world pharmacy examples. I'll also include a transcript of this tutorial, as well as a few practice problems and solutions, free for your studying pleasure. See you next time!